Hello, this is Jane Stavum, Superintendent of the Sioux Falls School District, and this is our podcast. Join us for an audible look inside the Sioux Falls School District, where we'll put a spotlight on the people, places, and practices of our district. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast. And I am super excited today because I'm dubbing this the Mother's Day special. I've always wanted to have my own Mother's Day special. Nobody will give me my own show around here out in our uh, video studio. So I guess this is as close <laughs> as I'm going to come to that. And I'm so excited to have you all here. And so to start us off, I'm going to have you um, go around our table. And I want to hear who you are, what you do in our district, and what year this is for you in education. Start us off. Okay, my name is Sydney Kennedy. I'm a second grade teacher at Harvey Dunn. This is my first year teaching. I'm Diane Kennedy, principal at Lowell Elementary, and this is my 38th year of being in the educational field. Love that. Um, I'm Amelia Skokestead, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Laura Wilder, and this is my first year of teaching. And I'm Kristen Skokestead. I'm the elementary principal at Garfield Elementary, and this is my 33rd year in education. Hmm, did you notice a little bit of a span? <laughs> That's because we have mothers and daughters today. And I'm Jane Stavum, and this is my 36th this year. It depends on if you count. My first year was in higher ed, partly because I didn't get a teaching job, and I didn't feel like subbing, and it was really hard to get a teaching job then. A little bit different now, and we'll talk about that. So let's talk about keeping it all in the family. Who knew you wanted to be a teacher like from when you were a little kid? Did either of you want to be a teacher? I knew that early? I did. Um, I remember playing school at home when I was a little girl. And it all started when I was in my classroom or my mom's classroom at Annie Sullivan. And I witnessed the impact that she was making on her students as I was growing up. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. So I realized that I wanted to make that impact as well. So I knew from an early age that I wanted to be a teacher. And did you see that too as your mother? I did see that um, she wanted to always help at school. And actually, when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a teacher too. Um, <laughs> And we lived across the street from Mark Twain Elementary, which is mm. no longer there. It's Susan B. Anthony now. But my mom tells me about how I would go across the playground after the last day of school, and my sister would hoist me into the dumpster, and we would <laughs> throw out all of the charts and papers and um, old workbooks and lesson plan books and bring them home for the summer to play school. That's serious commitment right there. <laughs> My fourth grade teacher gave me some books at the end of the year and that was kind of it for me. I've told the story of when I got the teacher's editions. It was like gold. So I get that. How about how about you? Um, I don't think that I knew I wanted to be a teacher as a child. Growing up, I never would have said, I'm going to be a teacher when I grow up. But um, looking back now, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. It's um, what I did with my parents. I watched both my dad and my mom teach. I did, similar to Amelia, spent a lot of time in their classrooms. I watched them. I listened to the conversations that they had. And looking back now, that definitely impacted the reason I'm here today mm -hmm. and why I did it today. And what did you think she would do growing up? You know what? I did not know for sure. I felt that she would be a great, great teacher, but that's not something she was necessarily voicing an interest in. So when she changed her major in college after a semester, uh, and she said she was going into education, I'm like, yep, I kind of thought that. So I'm not surprised, but I just was not sure where she was going to land. Yeah. As, as children of educators, did you ever feel a little um, resentful towards your parents having to share them with mm -hmm. lots of other kids? No, I didn't. The only time when I was like, oh, is when everyone's parents were coming to volunteer and my mom or dad couldn't be there, but mm -hmm. I also had the perks of seeing them every day in school, so that was fun. Oh, so were you at the same school? I was. I was at the them? same school as my mom. She was oh, teaching yeah. at Harvey Dunn when I went to school. Was Harvey. that ever not a good thing? Like, did you Only ever get if in I ever trouble? Got in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> that was rare, I promise. <laughs> Very That's rare. Good. <laughs> well, there are some downsides to it, as my children will tell you, but how about you? Did you have um, any downsides? I don't downside? think I ever felt resentful. Um, my mom worked at Annie Sullivan and I went to school at Annie Sullivan so it was always fun to see her in the hallway and like give her a quick hug while I was walking to like specials or lunch um 
But my dad, he he wasn't always able to come to my school. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a downfall. But um, she was always willing to help or volunteer if she could get yeah. away from her classroom, sneak away for a like classroom mm -hmm. party or something. So it wasn't really weird. It just kind of became normal seeing, yeah. Yeah. seeing your parents with other kids. Yeah. yeah. Your mom's good at hallway hugs. So yeah. It's <laughs> in her time. <laughs> Well, I, um, I think it's just so fascinating to think about the dynamics now of um, being at a point in your career where you're leading buildings and, you know, kind of being probably closer to the end of your career. Some of us are closer than <laughs> others uh, with the retirement coming up for Diane. But looking at what teaching was like when we started and what teaching is like now for you. So as you've kind of had conversations this year, probably over the dinner table or at family mm -hmm. gatherings, what are some things that you've talked about that seem like maybe they're different now than when we started our careers versus how things are right now? Have any of those things kind of bubbled up in your conversations? Yeah, you know, I definitely believe um, when I was a teacher or beginning my teaching career, we had a lot more flexibility in regards to, you know, not following state standards. We just kind of taught, right? And I'm not even sure where we had our ideas where to teach from, but we did. Grab the book. Without the standards. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, I think the dynamics of kids' behaviors have changed a little bit, mm -hmm. and so we have lots of conversations about that in regards to, you know, what happened today, what are you going to do differently, or what, you know, what did you learn from this today? So I think we have a lot more conversations about that mm -hmm. than what maybe I would have been thinking about earlier in my career. Yeah. How about you? I would agree with many of the things that Diane said. I remember in my very first year of teaching in Flandreau, I was teaching second grade, and it was a lot of, um, I would come home to Sioux Falls and go to the teacher store and buy a whole bunch of books that told me all these cool um, units that I could do on penguins and apples. you got to say dinosaurs. 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 Yes, everybody yes, talks actually, about. in my very first year, um, we made a Spaphosaurus dinosaur during state of testing out of paper mache. It was this big thing, and the custodian hated me for it. <laughs> yep. um, but the kids, I'm sure, will all remember that we made that dinosaur. And um, now it, I the teachers are very um, cognizant of the state standards and they know what kids need to learn to be able to go on. Not that we didn't, but it wasn't such a, a pressure, a pressureful thing. That, that's not mm -hmm. probably even a word, but, um, yeah, I just agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And, and the student behaviors mm -hmm. are definitely a little mm -hmm. different. I did have one student who I remember him standing on his desk and hand, holding up something to put on a wire that I had in my classroom, and that was about the most extreme behavior. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and that's a little different. I had some extreme <clears throat> behaviors at the very beginning of my career, and I often wonder, like, why did I, why did I stay? Mm -hmm. And I think it was because I had such a good team of people around me, and that's probably one thing that's the same for both of you. But you said something that's very different from when we started teaching, and that's just being able to get stuff and ideas and um, connecting with other educators, and that's the internet, because mm -hmm. this really dates you, but we didn't have internet when we started <laughs> to teach. We had school stores uh -huh. and, and places you could go and get magical, you know, bulletin board uh, edging and, you know, mm -hmm. some of the fun stuff, and my... My standby was Mailbox Magazine. Oh, yes. That thing arrived. Oh, yes. That was, I still have that some was, Mailbox Magazine. Yeah, I think I have a I had a paragraph <laughs> that got published in one, so that was, nice. you know, Impressive. very, uh -huh. yes. I, you know, it was like having a, a journal article or something. It was just my idea. Tell me about how do you communicate with other teachers, maybe even beyond our district, or where? what's your go-to places for inspiration? Um, I would say that my favorite thing is we have weekly collaboration with my kindergarten team mm -hmm. and I just love getting together with them and like just talking about what's going well, what's not going well, talking about data that we have found and what we can do to improve that data. I feel like that collaboration time is like a key piece to helping our mm -hmm. kindergartners grow. Um, I also really like being able to communicate with other teachers in the district, um, not just at my school, mm -hmm. but the new higher academy was really oh, nice yeah. because we were able to talk to other teachers from other schools and see like, oh, like, how are your kids doing in writing? Mm -hmm. um, ours are really struggling. Like, what are you guys doing to make it better for them? So that was also really nice and yeah. helpful as well. 
That network thing is so important. I think that mm-hmm. has a lot to do with kind of the longevity of, of our careers when you kind of come in with a cohort or some familiar people. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you were in school with them, but it just helps. Safety in numbers mm-hmm. sometimes makes a, makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. What's some of your go-to things maybe for your materials or your bulletin board mm-hmm. ideas? Where do you look for those? Again, like Amelia said, there's collaboration. I have a wonderful team. They That's have a ton good. of background and experience, so I got a ton of ideas from them. Um, I also had the opportunity after graduating college to go substitute at a couple different schools. Mm -hmm. So I was able to see what teachers were doing, what ideas they had in their room as well, and I took a lot of those into my new classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, Besides that, and besides the district, there's also just way more on social media now, Mm -hmm. which you said Mm -hmm. you guys didn't have that opportunity, Mm -hmm. but we're able to see posts and different ideas that they're using around the country and try them out. Yeah. To see if they I work. would also say your instructional coach. I think yeah, you rely heavily on your instructional coach too and yeah. enjoy that time with her too. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. even get the ideas from other coaches, which is fun to see. Yeah. Like, hey, this is what we're doing in our building. And then she comes and tells me, and it's fun to have that collaboration yeah. with her too. So, mothers, have you had to bite your tongue at all this <laughs> year and uh, not share your <laughs> wisdom you say, and opinions <laughs> that happened at all? Mm. <laughs> Maybe you should ask the daughters. I it guess. may be um, so. You know, I, I think she's done a really good job um, asking for my opinion, but she also knows that, you know, she's willing to listen to it, but she also has her own mind and her own mm-hmm. philosophy of what she wants to do in her classroom. So I think we do a lot of bouncing ideas off of each other, but I think ultimately I feel like she's strong enough and confident enough that she'll make her own decisions what's best for her kids. Mm-hmm. And so we have lots of conversations, but I do feel like she still... She'll take it, but she'll still do what she wants to do yeah. because she knows what's best for her students. That's good. Do you guys mm-hmm. clash on anything? I don't think so. I when, when we first went into her classroom, um, she had an idea of how to set up the classroom, and I had some ideas, too, <laughs> because it's not a traditional mm-hmm. kindergarten classroom that she's in. And so I just put out a couple suggestions. Maybe you should move your view board over here by the windows instead of in the front. And she did not want to do that at first. But then I said, well, let's just move it and see what it looks like. And I think she would agree (laughs) that it probably was a good choice because other people have set their room up like hers now. Um, So that was one thing. The model. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But one thing that's been really neat is that I've gotten to know her students because Mm -hmm. I've gone to her class once a month this year and done a little activity with them. And read them a story. And so when she talks about them or um, has questions or what would you do or this happened today, I'm able to really connect and and know who that student is. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's been very helpful. Yeah. And they love when she comes. Oh, I can Mm -hmm. imagine. There was one day she walked in the room and all the kids are like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and they run up and give her a hug. That's pretty fun. And then, you know, you can just enjoy being there because yeah. you don't yeah. have to be in principal yeah. mode and yeah. behavior yeah. mode and all of those I things. Think, I think the journey has kind of made us closer, too, yeah. in regards yeah. to yeah. that commonality of um, just having something in common and the passion that we have for the, the profession. So I feel like, I don't know, I think we've gotten yeah. closer through this process, which mm-hmm. has been fun. That is good. Mm-hmm. You just never know. Um, Mm -hmm. because we are each individual professionals, and I think that that generationally there are new ideas that always become part of professions, and then you add in some of the family dynamics with that, and you hope it all is just really good and healthy, but we all form our opinions, Mm -hmm. and we all have different experiences that we kind of look through that lens of what we're faced with. Um, Any hard things this year in your classrooms as new teachers? Um, I would just say that the behaviors are probably the hardest mm-hmm. part, um, but it's really nice having a good like support system at our school, our principal and our assistant principal. They're always willing to give me ideas of how I can help that particular mm-hmm. student. So that's super nice as well. Um, and they know their, the students really well, so yeah. that helps. Um, good. And my assistant principal, she's awesome. I am always able to go talk to her, and I feel so comfortable just going and being like, oh my goodness, this happened today. What can I do tomorrow? to help that student make it better. There's a lot of perseverance that we have to have because sometimes we can make things get better, a lot better. Sometimes it's a little better, and sometimes it's not better. And those are hard things. How about you? What's hard about this year? I think just as a first-year teacher, there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember talking to you on the first, or before the first day of school, and I'm like, okay, 
The door is going to close. There's going to be 25 <laughs> eight-year-olds looking at me. What do I say? Like, yeah, that's like, I haven't thought about. Here What's we are. my first line going to be? I don't know. So just how every day is different in the mm-hmm. education field. So just um, being prepared for what's thrown at you, but also being confident whatever decisions you make. Um, mm-hmm. You learn with every day. I'm not expected to know it all my first year. I know that. Yeah. But sometimes I want to know it all. and um, yeah. It'll come. I know it will. But. It is, and it's fun to grow over time, and that we'll, we'll talk about that at the very end, so be thinking about your advice to each other. I want to talk about a serious note just for a minute, because I think one of the other things that's changed since um, we started our professional journey is some of the um, really tragic things that we've seen happen in schools with dangerous situations, with school shootings, and some of those variabilities. So when we Um, started our careers, it was probably likely that nothing was locked during the school day, including side doors. All of that's changed. How you get into a school, what we do. We we practice tornado drills and maybe fire drills Mm -hmm. um, a couple times a year, but we didn't have to practice for things like run, hide, and fight and some of the things that we do. What what does that feel like um, probably to all of you as we've evolved in that as brand new teachers, have you felt pretty safe? Do you ever have kind of a, a feeling like, oh, I need to be ready for these other things? How does that feel as you begin to have life in a school now? I think um, growing up, living it through high school, we saw all those mm-hmm. things. We practiced all of those drills, so that helped me to feel a little bit more prepared. I understood the importance of it. And then switching roles and becoming the teacher and knowing Again, these students' safety is my number one job, Mm -hmm. um, has helped, and it's helped to maybe comfort them in being prepared for whatever situation could happen. Yeah, that's good. Because part of it is, you know, people think about the drills and things, but even the drills themselves can be traumatic, Mm -hmm. especially for younger children. Mm -hmm. And it's it's, uh, hard, I think, to help them understand the why, Mm -hmm. because it's a pretty big why. And to then downplay it enough that mm-hmm. it's appropriate for young kids to say, but it's all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Those two things don't match up very well. How about you? I would have to agree with Sydney. I feel like going through the Sioux Falls School District and practicing all those things, it made me feel more comfortable like mm-hmm. teaching it to my own students. Um, something that's different for kindergartners, it's like their first time doing it. Yeah. Um, so I remember the first, I think it was tornado drill that we did. Mm-hmm. I like practiced it with them in the classroom. I showed them how you're going to sit. But as soon as we got into the room that we go in, a lot of them just started bawling. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, it's okay. This is just for practice. It's not real. We're just practicing. You're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep you safe. And then they were kind of like relieved. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that the practice does help. Um, because now as we've gone on in the year, we practiced it again a few weeks ago, and they were all like, oh, we know what to do. We did this at the beginning of the year. Good. So, yeah. How about how about the two of you, just safety kind of over the course of a career? What does that feel like? It definitely has changed since mm-hmm. the very beginning. Um, and every day I think about, Hopefully, you know, this is going to be a safe day for everyone. Mm -hmm. When you're the building leader, you have to worry about every single person who enters those doors. And Mm -hmm. um, what I tell kids and families is that when they come to school, it's my job to make sure everyone is safe and respected at Garfield. And I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a big job. And to just be, we had a fire drill today and um, we have new clericals, so they didn't know we were supposed to call the Midwest Alarm Company. Mm-hmm. So we didn't blare the alarm. We just simply said we're having a tornado or a fire drill right now. And as we walked out, the kids knew that it was different because they weren't hearing the blaring mm-hmm. fire drill. And one girl said, "I kind of like this way because it's not so. It's yeah. very calm. It's not so chaotic. No one's yelling." Mm-hmm. And I thought. Yeah, me That's too. very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a weight. It is. Yeah, it's a yeah. weight that Every we day. carry. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I'd same thing. Um, I understand the importance of it, but it's sad that we have to do it mm-hmm. that way. Um, I do feel fortunate being in the Sioux Falls School District. I think we have so many systems in place mm-hmm. that it takes, you know, although we have a big role in our building to make sure that everything runs smoothly, it's nice to know that we have a district behind us right. that comes along beside us in those events. So it's not like... I 
I feel the importance of it, but I also know that I have someone there to support me. Yeah. And so that's a huge um, load off a person's yeah, mind. That's good. Well, those are really serious things. And as you start a career, I always think, you know, the reality of knowing about having to do those things and then being faced with small children mm-hmm. who are looking at you like, what, what is this? Is It's a lot. So good job mm-hmm. to all of you. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully we we won't have to ever need those things. Mm-hmm. When you think about the mindset of um, kind of the newest generation of professionals, mm-hmm. maybe compared to the way some of the mindset was when we started our career, it's a little bit different. It's much more common now to change jobs more frequently. It's um, a whole bunch of things to choose from, and now you add remote work into that as well. When you um, are thinking about the longevity of your careers as you just start, what is your mindset towards teaching? Do you think of it as a lifelong career? Is it a, I'll see how this goes for a few years and then make up my mind? What do you think? I definitely think I'm in for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Um, I love seeing my kids every day. And if I wasn't in this career path, I would think like, oh my goodness, I would look back and be like, why didn't I become a teacher? Why didn't I stay in education? Um, And just seeing the smiles on my kids' face just warms my heart every day. Mm -hmm. My mom came last week and we talked about lollipop moments and Uh what those moments mean. And my students always come up to me and they're like, I just gave you a hug. That was a lollipop moment because we talk about um, ways to fill your bucket and give those lollipop moments to people, being kind and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So just seeing my kids, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't in this career path or if I decided I was going to go in a different career path. Lollipop moments. I got to hang on to that. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that's good. What's your mindset? Yeah, just with what she said, every day is exciting. Even if I Mm -hmm. wake up one morning and I'm like, ugh. I'm tired today, or my breakfast wasn't very good. And then the kids. <laughs> okay, yeah. Then the Come kids. On, Diane. Well, I don't know who's that on. making her breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the kid walks through the door. A couple kids come through the door, and they run, Miss Kennedy, and immediately your day's better. And I can't imagine a job without that. I can't imagine a job mm-hmm. where every day is not different and exciting. And with this job, I do get that. So mm-hmm. I feel blessed, and I, I do think it'll be. A long time. Thank you. Hmm. I don't know. You always say that. Do you be an influencer or something? No, I'm no, not. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But that is part of the mindset right now is, well, I'm going to I'm gonna do this just long enough, and then I'm going to go do this other thing that's kind of related and kind of not it. And people can. I mean, the, the avenues for doing that now are just so different. You'll have that discussion later. I know. Later. Later. I can just hear this when I get home tonight. Never no. Said that. I know. She has not said that. But, you know, one of the things I think that's unique about our profession is – we we have this group of kids, and we start the year, and we end the year, and then we hand them off to the next person. And a lot of the satisfaction from the impact that we have on the lives of our students doesn't happen until later. And so this uh, last fall, I got a random phone call, and it was one of the kids that I had as a sixth grader. She's now in her 30s and, you know, has children of her own, and she and her dad were randomly talking about the day and they're like, let's call Mrs. Stavo. And it was the best thing ever. But, you know, I'm not going to just run into her at Target. She's in another state. She's, you know, an adult. And so, so much of what we do happens later. And sometimes they come back and tell us and, and, you know, we get to find out and we have those magical moments. But sometimes we go on to the next group and we don't know for a little while. How have you been impacted now by kids that maybe have come back and told you what that looked like? Well, I have um, a couple things that come to mind. We were at a SDSU football game a couple years ago, and all of a sudden, these two people came up to me and said, Miss Murph, is that you? And I said, yep. And they said, do you remember us? And I looked at them, and they go, it's Nikki and Kyle. (laughs) from Flandreau. They were in my very first second grade class. Oh, wow. They're now married and have four kids. And so (laughs) they wanted to get their picture taken with me and they were going to share it with some other kids. So that was one. And the other one um, was a student that I had at my first year here in Sioux Falls in third grade. And he was um, a student who 
needed a lot of extra love and support. And he, I, I always thought he's either going to go this way or he's going to go this way. Um, he, kids thought he was a kind of a bully to them. And he cried on the last day of school and I cried right alongside mm -hmm. him. And when he turned 30, he had written a blog post, 30 for 30, and I was number five, and he sent it to me. And Aww. I thought, okay, he, he made the right path, and he is now a principal hmm. in Oklahoma. And yeah. I'm, I just love catching up with him. Yeah, so, that's good stuff. Yeah. 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 You had anybody come back? Well, yeah. Um, we were getting ready for my retirement party. It's mm -hmm. like getting ready for a graduation. Yes, actually. it is. And so I was looking through my drawer of notes and keepsakes and all the cop composite pictures over the years. And Sydney was doing that with me, and we were reading some of the letters or whatever. And last year, out of the blue, I received a letter from probably one of my shyest pupils ever had um, early on in my career. And it was the longest letter, and it was so sweet. And it was so interesting to see what she picked out that she remembered. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how... I've been in, intending to write you many years, and I just kind of get busy with life. And she's a teacher herself, mm -hmm. herself in Madison. And she said, and then today was the day that I wanted mm -hmm. to write about about you or write to you. And so Sydney read that letter, and it was kind of fun for her to kind of see what a student thought of her mom yeah. as a teacher. I would hope that you thought that was kind of well, cool. Well, I would say, too, even growing up, I had a lot of um, people my age just above me that had had my mom as a teacher or mm -hmm. even my dad. As well, and then we'd get to like Washington High School, and they'd say, "Oh my gosh, your mom's Mrs. Kennedy," and I'm like, "What about me? Like I'm yeah. Sydney." <laughs> Always Mrs. First Kennedy or Mr. Kennedy's first. daughter. So those things you have to keep, and I'm sure your mothers have told you this, but the little notes mm -hmm. and the little um, things that you get, thank you cards, all those, put them in a special place and keep them. And I even kept a journal when people would come and tell me this great thing that kids did. I made them write it down. I just mm -hmm. found it the other day and. I didn't even realize I still had it. It was in a box that I unearthed. But those those mean a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we don't know how much they're going to mean when we're earlier in our careers. You uh, uh, you said something. I was going to come back to it. It was the keeping. Uh, I'll come back to it. This is what happens mm -hmm. to you. when you. Yes, that was it. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. I always have wanted to, when you're talking about getting ready for your party, you know, mm -hmm. when you go to a graduation party and you see the frame that has all the school pictures from K through 12, I wanted to do it for all of my years. And I think we had our, are you doing that yep. for all? <laughs> yep. 38. I don't know if I have every composite. I want to start from when I'm in kindergarten. Oh, no, I don't have yeah, that. Yeah, like kindergarten through age, whatever I am when I hang this up. I have yeah, to tell you a school picture from some just of our home. hairstyles. I was like... I think, <laughs> I think that Perms. will be a treat to see. Uh, yeah. 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 The, yeah. The attire that was big when I was teaching were, were jumpers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have Did you have some yes. Yeah. Yeah. And in my office, I have my Mrs. Skokestead's Wall of Fame, and it's all my composites of the classes <laughs> that I taught. And it's quite the talking point when kids are in there for either good behavior or not so good behavior. <laughs> but they'll go over to the wall, and they'll be like, Look at your hair. Yeah. You were alive in the 1990s? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Very much. How have, old yeah. are you? I have a new coaster that says, I get a kick out of telling the youngsters that I grew up in the 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> kind of puts it in perspective yeah. in a new way. Well, when you think about beginnings and endings of careers, it's just so fun that you're kind of um, able to enjoy this as mothers and daughters. Moms, what do you want to tell your daughters? What do you want them to know as you um, kind of finish this first special year? You won't ever get another one like this. I've told her all along to enjoy every minute of this year because this class is very special, and they always will be very special to her. Um, when I looked at the pictures of her starting school in the Sioux Falls School District as a kindergartner, and then... On her first day as a kindergarten teacher, that was just... That's awesome. It, it was amazing. But I have told her all along, you're going to have hard days, and you're going to have more excellent days than hard days. And you're going to have days when kids are hard, and you're going to have days when adults are tough. Mm -hmm. And just always look for the best in every moment and know that tomorrow is a brand new day, and you get to try over again. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. That is unique. We work with children and adults every mm-hmm. day. Not everybody can say that. What's yeah. your word of wisdom? You know, I, I think about the saying that days are long and years are short. Um, and I, I think mm. about the fact that, um, I don't know, I feel like I was just starting my career and now I'm ending it. And there's a 38-year span in the middle. And so it goes so fast. And so enjoy every minute of it. And like Kristen said, it's going to be hard. But there's also way more better days than hard days. Mm-hmm. And But make sure that you remain passionate about the job, right, or the profession, because it's so important. They have, Kids have to have someone who's passionate about the job in front of them. And so that's a heavy lift to do. And if you lose that, then you got to kind of step back and go, is this what I should continue to do? But enjoy it. Um, it is the most rewarding job, and to know that you're influencing so many kids. And it is great when you run into them over the years, and they talk about all the things that, the impact that you've had on them. Mm-hmm. That, that, to me, is what drives the passion. Yeah. And so enjoy it, mm-hmm. and soak it up, and remember it, and keep those keepsakes that keep you going on those low days. Mm-hmm. You might have to reread. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> End of year one and words to your mothers as they're at the uh, later part of their career and professional life. What what do you want to tell them? I just want to say thank you for always being there for me on my hard days, on my good days. You're always someone that is able to talk to me about anything that I'm going through, not with school, but with anything in life. And um, I just love looking up to you because you're an amazing woman. And I strive to be as amazing as you are. So well said. Would you like to say yeah, you to your mother? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> kind of hard. Oh. <laughs> what did she say? Yeah, yeah, did all. Okay, and then I just lost it. I had something. In my brain. Um, I think that it's very special. I think that no one understands what I do every day like you do. So having you in my corner and um, being able to catch up with you and you get it. You understand what I'm doing. So that's been amazing so again thank you um you've taught me so much and maybe in times you don't even know you're teaching me what you are um that's felt lucky and I feel blessed to have that not everyone has what I get to have and um I think that you should be extremely proud of everything as you close this door and I enter it I hope that I can live up to everything you've done in the district. Mm-hmm. So, thank you and so don't much. you want her to like cook for you and yeah, yeah. And a few yeah. of those things? Oh, I've already told year. her she's volunteering every Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that's good. I don't know about every Tuesday. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I told her. Well, you, um, all four of you are a gift, and you're such an example of so many families that we have in our district who have served like as an entire family unit. I suppose we could have had dads in here yeah, too, but this could. is a Mother's Day special. Yeah. So yeah. they know we love them. But Cause for Father's Day. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. We might have to do that. Might 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 uh, change the, the <laughs> podcast a little bit. Um, I had two sons. Neither of them went into teaching, and so you are very lucky to have each other. And I think um, when we think about the future of our profession, I've never been more encouraged. And I have um, seen both of your classrooms and have seen you with children. And it's a beautiful thing to see the next generation come in so successful. And we're just proud that you chose to be in Sioux Falls for your career. So thanks to all of you. And when we look at the exponential effect, all of the children that just the four of you sitting at this table have impacted, it is uh, humbling and and mind blowing at the same time. So happy Mother's Day <laughs> and enjoy you. your uh, upcoming Sunday together if you're spending it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank thanks. Thanks. You guys lose on Sunday. <laughs> 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 coming thank you. Got yeah. Yeah. you got two weeks. You got two weeks to get your Mother's Day in order. So <laughs> helpful hint from the podcast. <laughs> helpful hint for everybody listening. Go get your cards and flowers. <laughs>